did I lie when the highlight hits. Welcome back to my channel. Happy whatever day it is. Today we're going to be doing a full face of Aether Beauty. It is part of my Brands I Stand series and I just want to draw attention to them, not just because I love the brand, but also because so many cool things have been coming out lately. So this is the Joshua Tree palette. This is one of the things that I'm going to be using on my face today. And it's not technically supposed to be on full release until 420 and it's infused with hemp oil. So you guys get the little play there a little bit. So this is that. And you guys told me basically this is already shipping out to you, which is so exciting. So I feel okay going ahead and using that. We're also going to be playing with the Crystal Charge Cheek Palette in the Rose Quartz colorway. This is the one that goes the best with my complexion. I think it's just in the kind of paler shades. And then I also have not gotten a chance to show you guys these lip creams on camera yet. And so we will be using at least one of these and swatching definitely both of them. I already have my complexion on, my concealer, everything like that, so that we can go ahead and jump into just the Aether products. Maybe someday, definitely, I'm sure, someday we're going to have like a full, full face of Aether foundation, mascara, what have you. But these are the products that we're going to be playing with today and I'm going to be talking all about the brand, why I love them, and you'll get to see the brand new stuff in action. So let's go ahead and jump in, guys. I'm gonna start here with the Joshua Tree palette. We're gonna go right in on the eyes and then we'll go into blush and everything like that. But I'm super excited to jump into this. First, I wanna show you guys something I discovered recently and I did post this on my Instagram, so you might've already seen this, but this, as a blast from the past, is the Natasha Denona Safari palette. And you can hardly kind of see that, but it says all matte and it's like squished together. When I was kind of planning for my next declutter, I pulled this out and I started swatching and I was like, Wait a darn second, because this is the only Natasha Denona palette that I held on to. I decluttered and donated, donated to my friends. The other ones, I definitely held on to this because I was like, I don't own anything like this. Guys, I can now say <laughs> goodbye to the Natasha Denona Safari palette, which does contain Carmine. It is in really heavy duty plastic. It's a beautiful palette, but I do think that this is just a better kind of collection of these particular shades. The formula is better, it's more ethical, it's more sustainable, etc. And I'll pass this along to somebody that really likes it. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out to you guys because there are definitely people who had had their eye on the Safari palette for a long time. It's $129 and this is 58 and you can always kind of like catch a sale on her website. I also have 20% off down below any given time. So let's start with a good setting shade here. And yes, this one's all matte too. So all of her palettes before this have had other different kind of colorway themes and they've all had a mix of different finishes, you know, satins and shimmers and glitters. One of the big things that I think doesn't get enough attention about Aether is that they source their mica ethically. And that's something that's been getting a little bit more attention on my channel lately. I was talking about Arrive Beauty and how the first ingredient in this bronzer that I'm obsessed with is mica. And I think that that's why it goes on the skin so beautifully. And I couldn't find any evidence on their website one way or the other as to how they sourced their mica. And they confirmed yesterday, they messaged me kind of out of the blue, very, very sweet customer service team or at least social media team. They messaged me and told me, we're gonna be updating our website soon, but yes, all of our mica is certified ethically sourced and I was like that is such great news I'm sure that my viewers will love to know that but I think that Aether is raising the standard raising the bar on the industry in a way that like no one asked them to you know I'm gonna start you know kind of just easing into this wading into the pool here with this kind of medium brown tone in my crease but yeah as I was saying I think that the standards in the industry that I get really frustrated with because they are kind of so ubiquitous are the ones where people bring something to market and a lot of times their ethical promises or their sustainability promises are just that. They're just promises. They're like, we're really working towards having sustainable packaging. We're really working towards having ethically sourced materials and X, Y, and Z by whatever year. And in the meantime, 
we work with plastic because we're just doing the best that we can. Aether is proving that that's not the best that they can do, okay? Those other brands. Because Aether is making completely zero waste packaging because she takes the magnet out and the mirror out so that all of this, once you're done with the palette, is completely recyclable. It's just paper. And all of the ingredients are sourced from, the, first of all, they're very clean ingredients. Tyla used to work for Sephora. She got a ton, ton of experience in formulations and uh, just learning how products go together basically. And she had a very personal feeling that things could be done better essentially. And so when she decided to launch her brand, it was very much like top priority for her to make sure that all of these standards were met or exceeded unequivocally from where the products are actually manufactured and where they're sourced from. So it's all child labor free mica. It's all organic ingredients when possible. In all of her crystal gemstone shades, they will have actual ground ethically sourced gemstones in them, everything from amethyst to different ones in the crystal grid palette to diamonds in her highlighters. We'll actually be using some of the highlighters as well today. And I think that one of the biggest things is, you know, we can all stand on our morals all day long talking about all these brands that are being carried at like clean sites online and stuff like that. But a lot of times what I get so frustrated with, and you guys definitely saw me get frustrated with pretty much all of last year and definitely in my, you know, is clean beauty a scam video that came out at the end of last year was just that I felt like I couldn't bring you guys really, really high performing products within the clean beauty space. There are a handful of brands that I felt like came to a certain standard of expectation, a certain standard of quality that we're expecting. And I was just so disappointed overall by how hard it was even brand to brand, but also product to product. Like there would be brands like Ilia. I actually just ordered everything that Ilia makes that I didn't already own so that I could do a full brand review for you guys. Because I feel like Ilia is one of those brands that is probably the most polar in the sense of they make some of my absolute favorite products on the market and they also make some total duds, total duds. And I just don't understand how a, how a brand has like such a really strong vision for certain things and then just blows it on others. So I really want to help you guys kind of navigate that brand in the future because I do know that their products are really expensive and I don't want you to waste your money unnecessarily. Waste your money unnecessarily. Spend your money unnecessarily. I don't want you to waste your money. But all that to say, it's very rare and it is also really exciting in this particular space to find a brand that isn't putting the responsibility on the end consumer. They're saying, we're going to do all the legwork up front. That does make for a more expensive product because they're sourcing either from the US or Canada or Europe for any of their ingredients and their manufacturing. And so yes, that's going to result in more overhead to produce any of these palettes. But I do think that one of the most unfair things is that from like a recycling standpoint, from a sustainability standpoint, Almost every brand out there, you know, these big conglomo brands, they're really putting the responsibility and all of the like heavy lifting in terms of thinking and consideration on the end consumer to be like, well, how are you gonna spend your money? How are you gonna vote with your dollar? Are you gonna go for convenience? Or are you going to do all that extra legwork to make sure that the products that you're buying are so ethically sourced, etc.? That shouldn't be our responsibility. Brands should be wanting to do that in general on their own for the right reasons, but they don't. And so I think that like Aether raising the standard the way that they do, I can get really, really passionate about it because I just think that like they deserve more attention. And I know it's something that you guys feel really strongly about too, a lot of you guys, and it should be more normal. Okay, so typically when I wanna go outside my comfort zone, I always go into the blues. I will swatch these for you guys, but I always forget it gives me like red demon eyes on camera. It's fine in person. So I've done enough blue looks for you guys lately. Let's go a little bit more practical and playing kind of these like brown and red tones here because I think that those are the ones that I probably will end up using the most anyway. There's also this yellow. Should we go into the yellow? What does that yellow look like? It's a really pretty kind of muted mustard. I wonder if that would look pretty here. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna be doing something I've never done before. I don't know, I feel like you guys have seen the coral eye on me enough times. I'm gonna go in with like a little bit flatter of a brush here. Go with this pretty mustard yellow. This is just slightly different from what I call jaundice yellow, which is like the yellow that was in the KKW palette. You can see how that's muted and it was just a little bit too sunshiny yellow and it did look really bizarre on my skin. Whereas I feel like this 
is just so much more wearable because it does have a little bit more like of a, a green undertone to it, if that makes sense. It just makes it kind of look a little more at home with the rest of these shades. So you guys might not know, but like I know Tyla personally, she's a very, very open individual. She's happy to talk to anybody. She's one of the most friendly people ever. Like if you DM her, it's her DMing you back. She's pretty much a one woman show with the brand. So I keep saying they, I should just say she, because she is the one really running the entire show and you know, basically took all the risk on herself to start this brand. But the one thing that I would say about Tyla to get the best idea of her like off the bat is that she's the most creative person I've ever met. She just has instincts. She has instincts that I don't have. And so when I'm talking to her about product or talking to her about the next things that are coming out and things like that, I'm always like, how do you see into the future the way that you do? <laughs> like, how do you have such strong instincts for this stuff? She's like, I've always been like that. It's just a really, really cool thing to sit back and watch. I don't know, I, I only know a few people in my life who are like that. I have a good friend from college who just created as he breathed. He could play any instrument he sat down to learn and it was just one of the most frustrating but also one of the most marvelous things I've ever seen. And my sister is a natural born creative. She's one of those people who, you know, can work with any brand and they're like, hey, well, we wanna reinvent the wheel on this. And she's just like, I've got 20 ideas, you know? And I'm just not that person. I'm very practical. I'm very like, I wanna measure everything. I like data. And so it's very, you guys know, I love watching people be good at what they do, especially if it's something that doesn't come easily to me. I talk about that with like TV series and things like that. I just love watching people in their element. And I feel like this brand is just so fun to watch because it's really someone just working in their element. I want to start with this really like warm, gorgeous kind of garnet color right here. It's called Rosewood and kind of build a little bit of the outer corner, corner here. I always say this about mattes, but you cannot hide <laughs> a bad formula in a mat. You know, it's either gonna perform or it's not, but there's really not much that you can do to kind of like soften the blow in an all matte palette if it's not good. And this you can see, I always say, I am not the most like gifted eyeshadow person in the world. I'm not Raw Beauty Christie. I'm not just like sitting there just like la di da, like just make something gorgeous happen at the blink of an eye but this makes my life really easy. I didn't even use a primer. It's just blended so, so nicely. I actually, I mean, this is totally a personal preference thing, but I do prefer this formula, the Aether formula to Natasha Denona. I really have an appreciation for the Natasha Denona formula. I understand it's a very professional formula. And I think Tati's palettes are very similar to the Natasha Denona formula, but they're very stiff. And so they go on the skin and it's like, there's really no hope if you get it someplace you don't want it. You can't just kind of like blend and blur until you like what you see. And there are the other end of the spectrum kind of palettes where you blend and blend and blend and like things get muddy really fast. This I feel like is like right in the middle. Again, Tyla has a lot of experience because she has really interacted with so many products over the course of, you know, however many years she worked at corporate for Sephora that like, you know, she know she knew what she wanted and she, she knew what she wanted out of her formulas. Gonna go start with kind of this warm sandy color. It's called Poppy underneath. I am not Raw Beauty Christie fam. Okay, and then I'm gonna go with the lighter shade here and blend that a little. I don't mind having a good bit of shadow underneath my eyes. I talk about this all the time, but I think my eyes are kind of far up my face, so I'm okay with bringing them down just a little bit. Mixing that poppy shade in with the palest shade in here. Just gonna blendy blendy. Just gonna blendy blendy. I feel like we have a little bit more depth here than over here, so I'm gonna go in a little bit with a deeper burgundy shade. Whenever I actually start putting eyeshadow on, I have to concentrate so hard not to have like these 12, 15 second pauses between words. Yo, I really like that. Okay, I'm gonna go with the pale shade on the inner corner here, but I'm gonna end up going over that with the highlighter because on any eyeshadow look, I end up going in with the pure diamond dust highlighter because I just love 
how it looks, okay? I think it looks amazing. I did go, I painted a little bit outside the lines. Where is my hourglass? So this is my hourglass powder. This stuff is miraculous. <laughs> and I like to just take a little bit of it. It's what I already have on my face kind of to set it anyway. I'm wearing the Bite Change Maker foundation. It's been my favorite lately. It's just so resilient for all the weird weather changes that we're having and all the humidity and everything. And also how my skin is just kind of doing new crap lately. I just feel like the bite is the least dewy of the ones that I own that still gives me a really, really nice kind of, I don't know, a coverage level that I'm comfortable with. I don't feel completely shellacked. Little blendy blendy. And you know, if I did decide that this was a little bit too saturated, I can go over it with something like the hourglass powder and it would just mute the whole thing down one notch, but I don't really wanna do that. So I think that that's totally beautiful, but I do want to kind of swatch the other shades for you guys, the more like blue shades. We have just some really awesome purples and blues and greens and stuff. So I'm gonna do it on top of my hairy arm. You guys are just gonna, just gonna deal. I <laughs> know you probably don't care. People who talk about people having hair on their arms is a bad thing is like, I really, I don't get that. We're mammals, fam. We're mammals. Okay. Um, once again, I don't understand why I can't get swatches in the right places. Plus I'm doing a swatch with my thumb right now. Oh my God. This one was with my pinky. I feel like Jen loves reviews when she was doing the Jaclyn Hill palettes. She's just like, my fingers aren't equally strong. So those are kind of the more cool, like cool toned. If greens and blues could be warm toned, like these are so saturated, they almost feel warm. You know, they almost feel like they have a little bit of like red behind them. Like this purple has definitely got red behind it. This green even has just like this sort of like yellow thing behind it. And so I just feel like a lot of it's really well thought out to make shades that are kind of covering the whole spectrum still go together because they do all feel like kind of like a, a sunset. Okay, so next I'm going to go in with my Supernova Crush Diamond Highlighter in Pure Diamond Dust. So it's important to me that I leave you guys with enough information here to make the right call on which one is right for you. So where is the other one? I don't know, I felt really validated the other day because like Raw Beauty Christy couldn't find something on her desk and I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. <laughs> I could hear the sound of everything clinking together and I was like, her desk sounds like mine. Oh, I don't know. I'll find it in a minute. I just wanted to show you guys that the pure diamond is like a neutral beige, whereas the pink diamond is quite pink, kind of peach even. And I just wanted to show that to you guys in case you were curious between the two, but I'm going in with a pencil brush here and I'm going to just start what I call painting with magic because this is the wildest highlighter I have ever seen. And I like to take it onto my lash line right on the inside. And I feel like it adds this crazy pop. It's just so unexpected. And no, I'm not doing like my whole lid or really stealing the show. I just feel like this is where the light hits. Boom. When the highlight hits. I'm gonna do my brow bone here. And at first it goes on a little bit, almost like a color, you know, contrasty, and you can build it so that it has a little bit more of like a silvery color payoff to it. But I like to smooth it into my skin, kind of as it warms with your skin, it takes on this just like texture, this really beautiful catch the light kind of white, white, wet, texture uh, on your skin that blends in really beautiful with the rest of her formulas. And so like, you know, I can build it on the inner corner, get that really, really bright payoff, but then I can blend it onto the lid and it just provides a texture and a way that it catches the light. Look at that. Like the longer that you work that into warm skin, the more of like a creamy texture you get. Oh, so pretty. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and start on some cheeks. We're gonna do all the powder products before I do mascara and stuff, just because I don't like to get powder in my mascara. I don't like to have to navigate around like my brow mousse after the fact, because it's a wet product. So I'm going to take my favorite fluffy brush. This is an Eco Tools. The label has rubbed off. They don't make this anymore, but they make a very similar one. It's not the full powder brush, which is this. It's like the fluffy powder brush or something. Just understand it's not this one. This one's really soft. 
This one's really fluffy. I'm so good at this. I'm going to start with the middle shade, which is called Compassion here in my bluish palette. This one is a little bit satin. The bright pink is very matte. And then you have this highlight that you can mix with any of them or just wear by itself. If you ever feel like your cheek color palette doesn't coordinate quite well enough with your eye color palette, you can always take a smaller brush, an eyeshadow brush, and use a little bit of your blush in kind of up here or any of the kind of like lighter blendy areas on your eyeshadow look, and it will make it look like it kind of comes together a little bit better. I've always found that to be really helpful when I am working with something that's completely different from my skin tone, like blue. You kind of end up with like these socket eyes sometimes. And I feel like if you use the same highlighter and maybe a little bit of the same blush that you use on the rest of your face and just kind of like, just kind of hide it in your eyeshadow look, it pulls the whole thing together a little bit. Oh, you guys know I love blush. And this is just such a lovely colorway. Look at how pretty that pink is. And I can just kind of keep playing and playing and playing with it. So the middle shade I think is the easiest one to kind of go all over your complexion with. And then I'll use the bright one as a pop kind of on the cheek, the, right on the apple. But this is probably, you know, one of the rare times that you get to see me put on the exact right amount of blush instead of putting it on twice, because uh, typically I will do my blush, think it's enough, and then I will put my eyeshadow on and then I'll go, nah, I need more blush. And I'm not gonna say that that's not gonna happen still by the end of this, who knows. But like, look at how that matches my natural lip tone so much. It's just a very, very pretty kind of like rosy at home pink on pale skin. And she does have two colorways in this. There is the ruby colorway that's for deeper skin tones. All right, let's take a little bit of self love, which is this bright pink right here and go apples of the cheeks. Get a little lift. I feel like a little lift. And I'm taking a very light hand for this part because it's matte. <laughs> a matte blush is always going to give you a little bit more saturation a little bit more quickly. Except in the Patrick Ta blushes. I'm not sure what the formula is on those, but they're really sheer. It's very interesting. But this has like a blurring quality to it. So as you're putting it on, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily compare it to Hourglass because Hourglass has actual like sheen to it, but it does still have that kind of blurring quality that I feel like Hourglass does. The Hourglass and bit lighting blushes. So as promised, I do want to take a tiny bit of the bright pink and kind of Put that right here in my like blended color area. And you can see it just kind of brings it together almost imperceptibly. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that looks a little bit uh, a little bit more together. Little trick there. It just warms that burgundy up. Or maybe just like pinks it up. It was already warm. Yeah, just pinks it up. Pretty. So now I'm gonna take that big fluffy brush that I always use to lay down my like base shade for my eyeshadow. It's from Wayne Goss. And I'm gonna use that as a highlight shade, highlight shade, highlight brush right here. And this shade of the highlight is called Heart. And it's very different from her crushed diamond highlighters like the one I just used on my eyes. It's just a milkier highlight. It does have a little bit of that same kind of refracted quality, but it's just a little bit creamier on the skin and not quite as high impact. So you can see it's just a beautiful, I'm a big fan of a ballerina pink highlighter to begin with. It's one of my favorite things in the world on my pale skin tone. I just feel like it's a very flattering color on me, but I do like that it's neutral. You know, it's still like almost, almost to the point of being cool toned, but it's like a champagne pink like a bubbly rosé, which is my preference. <laughs> yep, gonna go ahead and get carried away on this if that's okay with you guys. And I'm going to take a smaller brush. I'll just take the same brush, but I'm going to just kind of dip the end of it in to the same one that I just used on my eyes because this is just a more, just a more intense highlight. I'm just gonna place that right at the top of my cheeks. And you can see it's just like, a little bit of wapow. I'm not an all over the face wapow person, but I do like, I like to control my wapow, you know? A little bit of wapow. Never hurt anybody. I'm going to want more blush. Yeah, I'm gonna want more blush. Just go ahead and add more. Now is the time that I am going to go do my mascara and my eyeliner and my brow mousse and everything. And then we will come back. I will show you guys all the Aether palettes and we will do a little bit of lip. Be right back.
Okay, so I have everything but lips on here. I am loving this. When all of these textures get melded together by a little bit of finishing spray, it's just like icing on the cake. It's so, so beautiful. So I'm really, really loving this look. Like I'm really, really loving it. I love this eyeshadow palette. And I have all of the eyeshadow palettes here. And actually I did find Pink Diamond. It was literally sitting right next to me. It's the status of things right now. But before I show you guys these things, I realized I forgot to tell you if you didn't watch my first Brands I Stand video, like what I'm, what I'm doing here. So yeah, obviously I really wanted to share with you guys a full face of Aether anyway. Like I was gonna do that anyway, but Brands I Stand is basically me calling attention to and kind of putting in my vote of confidence for brands that I really, really want to see survive this crisis. Baldwin Denim, if you guys have been on their website lately, I don't know if that's a brand that you guys visit very often, but it's one of my favorite clothing brands. Their website is empty now. I got an email a few weeks ago basically saying they're shutting down operations, period. Like they, I guess, were kind of on the ropes anyway and this kind of did them in. And I just don't know what the financials of any company look like. And so I wanna make sure that the brands that I love have, like have a fighting chance. And so I'm just kind of doing this series so that I can share the brands that I really, really love with you guys in this moment where I think that like, Brands need our help more than we need brands help, which has like not been the narrative. It's been the opposite for influencers thus far. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's talk about some palettes. Tyla has been generous enough to send me everything as it comes out. So yes, these are all gifted to me, but I am just so, so in love with each and every one of them for their specific identity. So we'll go kind of in order of how they came out. So I think Summer Solstice was the first one and you can see it is a very I should I mean it's summer solstice she just kind of calls it solstice now because it does fit into a very fall colorway as well and you end up with very different from the Joshua Tree palette a lot like this entire V right here is all like shimmers and satins which are just so like creamy and beautiful and chock full of like I said ethically sourced mica and they're so unbelievably like fun and easy to use. I barely dipped a finger in those and they're just so, so pretty. Mica is a miraculous ingredient, it really is. Oof, can't you just see an eye look of just those? Like, come on, <laughs> that's so beautiful. Like this iridescent peachy color, come on. So the next one that she came out with, I believe is my, I mean, I shouldn't say my personal favorite because I do love all of them, but it's the one that I get the most use out of and it is the Rose Quartz palette. And it is because we are in a color family that fits so happily on my skin tone. If you're really pale and you find it difficult to find a palette that you can use all the colors straight from the pan onto your face, Rose Quartz might be right up your alley. Now, if you are kind of like me, if you get a little bit of a tan and you get really warm toned as soon as you get a tan, cause like I'm not tan at all right now, but when I am really pale, I can pretty much get away with wearing like neutrals and cool tones and warm tones and just make sure that everything goes together on my face and that's fine. But if I'm a little bit too tan and I start putting on a bunch of bronzer, this doesn't work anymore. And I wanna go to like summer solstice or something like that. So just bear that in mind, this is a decidedly cool toned palette. And so, you know, if that's not your thing and you are pale, you might still consider summer solstice or Joshua Tree. So I want to go ahead and swatch a few of the more like out there shades that are in this palette. These are definitely like the exciting shimmers that come in rose quartz. Oh God, khaki. Just swatch it right on top with the blue that you wiped off, why don't you? So yeah, again, just that beautiful, super blendable texture. Lots of fun things to play with there. But as far as the shades that I get the most use out of, you know, it's like these four, well, these five, one, two, three, four, and then this one right here. And those will give you basically the basis of any eye look on pale skin. And what I like about them is that even though they are pale toned, they're not chalky. They have a ton of saturation to them. So you can put them on, they'll cover your veins. They'll blend and blur kind of like your untweezed eyebrows and things like that without giving you too much like color. Okay, I think that the next one that came, what am I talking about? I think the first palette was Crystal Grid. I'm doing this in the wrong order. You guys have been probably screaming at me. So this is Crystal Grid. This was, I, th I think, her first palette. And these are all in shimmers and satins. Tyla, I'm so sorry. I did it all in the wrong order. While this looks like, again, it looks a lot like Joshua Tree in the sense that it covers the whole spectrum. You know, you've got yellows and blues and reds and greens. They're all intelligently muted. So you've got like the yellows 
it's not just a golden kind of like rusty yellow, but there's also a green yellow. And so you have the shades that accompany, God, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, accompany a lot of the other shades in here. So like the closest you get to a matte is like something like this, which is like this beautiful kind of muted olive tone, but this will act as kind of a shimmer on top of it. These layer so beautifully, so beautifully. And so, yeah, you can see how a lot of them are like, sitting next to you. They're adjacent to the shades that work really nicely alongside them. And that is, I think, kind of the strength of this palette. Plus, this shade Moonlight is wackadoo. It's crazy. I kind of want to put it on my inner corner and just be weird because it's so, so pretty. And it's probably one of the most like pop, like ice blues I've ever seen. So we're going to get weird. Sorry if you are like, no, Khaki. Don't touch it, it's perfect. Guess what, it's just makeup. Ooh, did I lie? Oh my gosh. I will say guys, I am so, so pale. Very, very difficult for me to get a pop on the inner corner. There are very few products that will give me an instant inner corner highlight because most everything is like, I think it's gonna be a highlight and it's actually like an eyeshadow because it's too dark. That ice blue is bomb. Ooh, and it like, you know, since they're sunset shades, it's almost like a sky color on there. I'm doing like a full Tati right now where I just keep putting, putting on more things because I'm too excited about them. Okay, that's awesome. I'm glad that I did that. That's really, really pretty. And then finally, <laughs> before we got to the Joshua Tree palette is uh, the Amethyst Crystal Gemstone palette. And this is for my girls, not just who love a good deep tone or a good purple, but also, oh my God, medium to deep skin tones. Oh my God. She really keeps skin tones in mind. She makes palettes and products and all of her releases take into consideration that not everybody looks the same and that not everybody wants the same thing out of their makeup. And so this is just one of the most, I mean, it's just unbelievable. So it's like, yes, they all are, you know, in a purple family, but you have, you know, a garnet very similar to the one, it might even be the same shade. No, this is called Crown Chakra. And uh, this one is called Rosewood, but very, very similar uh, kind of, it's a little bit more purple, a little bit more cool toned burgundy here. Goes all the way from that to like a purple that shifts a tiny bit green and one that shifts blue. And then you have um, these browns, you know what I mean? So you have like a matte, kind of taupe shade. And then this really, I mean, this is like up there with Smog from uh, Urban Decay, which is like one of my favorite shades, but it does have just the tiniest bit of purple behind it. I'm telling you guys, she just has an eye. She just has an instinct. She has a sense for what's going to wear really beautifully. And as I've experienced all of these palettes individually, I have learned to just trust her. I want to, I want to make an entire look around just that shade. That shade is called, what was that called? Protection. Um, unbelievable. Just, oh. And I should mention, you know, since this has amethyst in it, she keeps in mind, and you can take this or leave this because they're beautiful either way, but she keeps in mind the, the meanings of all the crystals and stuff. And so amethyst is a crystal that is, you know, the symbol of sobriety and, um, you're, your, uh, you know, your third eye chakra and like enlightenment and things like that. And so a lot of the names of everything are around that. So spirituality, third eye, transcendent, transformation, meditation, protections, crown chakra. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the inspiration for this kind of thing. So again, you don't have to believe in the power of crystals in order to appreciate them, but if you do all the better, look at how my nails go with it. Like it's just kind of the same, like lavender gray family, but just deep and shimmery. Anyway, I'm obsessing. Okay, and then finally, I did, I'm going to actually swatch these highlights next to each other for you so that you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the pink diamond, and I have to say it's more like peach diamond as far as I'm concerned. So, oh, I, it's so soft. They're so soft, they're almost like a cream hybrid, almost. So I wanna swatch those next to each other so you can see. There isn't a lot of color here. It is more of a beautiful shimmery light reflecting, refracting texture because they are made with diamonds, ethically sourced diamonds. And you can see this is the one that I, you know, that I wear more often, which is the pure diamond. And then the pink diamond is, I think, better for medium to deeper skin tones, even though you could totally get away with 
wearing either one of them, <laughs> but I just prefer this one because it's a little bit more neutral. Okay, let's do lips. Let's do lips. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to put on is actually my Bite Beauty primer because this is definitely an optional step, but I am just not exactly the best at putting on a liquid lip color, okay? I just need a little bit of help. I have here Self Love and Balance, and these are the, what are they called, Ruby? Oh no, like Radiant Ruby Lip Colors, I think is what they're called, but I don't have the box. Okay, so <laughs> where am I going to swatch these is the question. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is called Balance. This is the one that we're gonna use. I'm gonna go in with my lip liner first. This is Self Love, this is Balance. This won some awards, this lip cream formula, because it's not a dry down, suck you dry, long wearing lip color like the liquid lipsticks that I feel like are a little bit passe now. This is kind of a hybrid where it does wear very saturated and creamy, but it stays put, but you have the option of wearing it either kind of like bouncy and plush looking or you can blot it, which is my favorite way to wear it. And it, oh my gosh, the color stays so consistent. So this is, oh, we're, we're gonna start with my lip liner, khaki. I can feel the, uh, the Bite Beauty primer kind of taking effect too. It's got a plumping quality to it. And this is also like a Jackie Ina trick too. She does it because she has deep skin and she's always like, how do you wear a nude lip on deep skin? You bridge the gap with a lip liner, but this is just like, how do I put any color in my comfort zone? with this lip liner. Always looks really, really normal at first. All right. And it's kind of a peach nude. I think it would work on a lot of skin tones. Couple of tips for not letting your lip color take over your face. One is I will take and just kind of like round my cupid's bow a little bit so it's not like cartoonishly exaggerated because I do have a pretty pointy cupid's bow and I would rather it just kind of disappear. And then also I can take just a little bit more on my lip liner. I feel like I rubbed a little bit of it off and uh, just to keep working that until I like the gradient. But you can see, I can wear this at every coverage level. I could pile this up and get, you know, this level of like shine and opacity out of it, but I actually prefer it just a little bit more spread out on me just because you guys know I don't wear a lot of lip color and I feel like it looks super at home, like super at home, super, super pretty. And because it's bouncy and nourishing and doesn't like suck me dry, I don't feel like I have to put a gloss on top of it, which you guys also know is really uncommon. Pretty much anything I put on my lips, I'm always like, and I got a comfort zone, put a gloss on top of it. I don't wanna do that with this. I just think that it's really pretty on its own. It is really, really hard to compare this lip color formula to anything else just because it does have kind of that hybrid plushiness but also dry down and so it like stays really creamy but it also stays put and I think that that's why it kind of gets as much attention as it does but the other reason is this is the first lip product that I know of that I've ever heard of that is both recyclable packaging and made from 100% recycled packaging and so the plastic is recycled the plastic is recyclable everything is completely zero waste in this line it's just not something that's required of a brand and she did it anyway. And I just think that I like, we need to shout it from the rooftops because we could be doing so much better. This does come in several more shades, but uh, this coral shade too is like one of my favorite, like close to red lips. I think it just looks really, really pretty on my skin tone personally. I think that it's like a very valentine -y sort of color. And this peachy nude is just so, it's just so pretty. It just kind of like, kicks it up a notch, you know? So guys, I hope that this was fun for you. I know that I've been teasing this video for a while, just using the heck out of the new Joshua Tree palette and actually showing you guys the blush palette in action. I think I've already used the blush palette once in a video, but I think that this is an even better kind of like showcasing of what it's capable of. And again, I just love watching what Aether does. I love watching what Tyla's brain puts out because she does not shy away from her inspiration. She's not like, well, I wonder if this is gonna like fit in with the theme of everything else everybody else is putting out. Like, no, <laughs> her palettes and her releases, they stand out and she's proud of that and they stand out for a reason. And I feel like they are so different in a lot of ways that Brands need to catch up, honestly, especially when it comes to their ethical standards. Brands need to catch up. I'm done with the excuses. I'm tired of hearing how it's just not possible because clearly it takes a lot of work, 
but it's not impossible. It's definitely possible. And Aether's raising the standards. So if you have any other questions about these products, guys, let me know down below. I have definitely individually helped so many of you guys kind of navigate her palettes and stuff like that in DMs. So I also have a couple of other videos, one where I did like a split face of like cool tone, warm tone, where I used the first four palettes on my whole face, like on either side. And I will link that below as well. That was a really, really fun video to do, even though I'm not an expert in color theory, <laughs> but I do think that it was fun to kind of showcase the differences and how to wear each. So I will link that below. But yeah, if you guys have any additional questions, do not hesitate to ask those down below in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this, guys. This was really fun. I love the way that my makeup turned out. I love it, especially the pop of blue. I'm like really glad that I did that. But anyway, yeah, if you guys did enjoy this, found it helpful, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Hit the notification bell so that you guys get the alerts for my videos come out because I am putting them out as often as I can for you guys. I've got some really, really fun, exciting stuff coming up. Someone requested a wish list for the upcoming Sephora sale. I have a brand new one of those planned for you guys. They'll probably come out sometime next week and a bunch of other really fun stuff and a little announcement. So yeah, guys, definitely subscribe and stay tuned. Get those notifications. I love you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, and I will see you in the next one.